Hello and uh, welcome to a short video following up on the um, abstract macro that I did a couple of weeks ago which people seem to have uh, enjoyed. Um, different this time, I'm using similar equipment, uh, same Olympus um, OMD EM1 Mark II. I have a 30mm uh, macro on here uh, where the focus and distance is really very very close and it gives me uh, a one and a quarter times magnifier. Um, same light box. I'm not using the uh, LED lights uh, today uh, and I'm just doing some shots of veg. A bit of broccoli here. It's getting past its sell by date, the broccoli, uh, but I've got some other veg in the kitchen which I'm sure I'll slice up and we're just going to see what kind of shots we can get with stuff that you already have in the house. Okay, you might not have the macro lens, but you can use extension tubes and things like that, which are really very inexpensive. As before, I've got the camera set to do uh, internal focus stacking. So it will take 15 images and it will then blend all of those together into a uh, single JPEG uh, with a wider um, field of view uh, on it. The camera uh, will be set at various apertures depending on what uh, I want to achieve in terms of uh, the focal depth uh, on it and uh, I'm just going to have a play with some natural things that I've got in the kitchen um, and uh, possibly in the case of the broccoli things are ready to be moving out of the kitchen. Uh, I have to say, I don't normally waste a, uh, a great deal of food. It's, uh, it's too damned expensive. Uh, this uh, simply got lodged uh, behind something. I didn't see it, so uh, please don't have a go at me. I will eat this. Uh, it's, just, it's just shedding a little bit. What if we get up the stem? Oh, yes. Looking up the stem is quite nice. Brush. Important stuff. I've got too many bits of broccoli in the background of this now, they're all falling off. So this is one of the problems of using the light box. I can't get into it. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm having to work semi-blind. God, this is absolutely shedding. Something very, very useful in a studio environment where you're trying to shoot small things. And that's something to prop something up with. And uh, there's little better than Lego. Lego bricks are stunningly good for this because uh, they come in set sizes and you can stack them together, they lock together so you can create bigger things uh, and even manufacture very quickly uh, a range of little supports to really cup something and, uh, and the like. It's, it's absolutely a top tip for any studio work where you're shooting small things. So a bit of Lego just underneath the a stem of this just to change the angle a little. I need to stress that I'm not trying to make the greatest image here. I'm just going through a process, a kind of workflow process that is yeah, refinable. Let's, let's put it that way, it's refinable. This is not something that I do day in, day out. It's as much as anything to give you some ideas as to what you can do. One of the struggles I have with photography in general is finding something to shoot. So if I have a mental block for instance, perhaps I can go to YouTube and have a look at what other people are perhaps suggesting. And it's one of those kind of videos. It's me showing the process of the equipment I'm using. I do not expect to get photos that I would say, oh, that's good. So please don't expect portfolio shots from this. And we also need to point out that the lens is new to me. So I'm trialing the lens as well. I bought the lens about a week ago and it's really the first time that I've used it. So if you're not used to macro, what you really do need to do is bear in mind that once your camera is kind of set up and in position, move it as little as possible. Because what you really want to move is the subject itself. I've got my Pluto trigger. Uh, on here, just using it as a shutter release. F11 at a eighth of a second, and yeah, um, it's, it's going to be okay. I think actually on this shot, I probably want a really shallow depth of field and not the stack. So I'm gonna wait for the camera to finish that, gonna review what it's doing, and it's an interesting shot. I think the um, the depth on it is okay. I'm not sure I'd 
get much better, but what I can do is get it a lot, lot closer. This lens focuses down to kind of stupid distances. I think it's nine and a half centimeters uh, minimum focal distance. And when we're talking of minimal focal distance, you need to realize that that is from the sensor, not from the end of the lens. Uh, the lens itself is about nine centimeters. So yeah, this broccoli florette is probably virtually touching. I can't see it, of course, from um, out here because it's right underneath there. One more and I think I'll abandon this florette from there because uh, quite simply my, my dinner is being crushed around the, uh, the light box here. And uh, yeah, when all said and done, I did buy this for nourishment rather than just um, photography. In actual fact, I didn't buy it for photography at all. Um, I found it this morning and thought that would look good in front of a macro lens. So I think it's time to get something else in front of the camera and see what we can get from another vegetable or fruit from the kitchen. So a bit of cauliflower and put the broccoli in here. As I say, I'm not terribly familiar with the lens. Uh, really, I ought to run a series of kind of tests to see just how good the focus happens to be uh, along the aperture range. And as opposed to do that, I would probably use a tape measure. Seems about the best thing, because it's obviously graduated, and I can see at what point I get uh, focus at different, uh, at different levels. Certainly got a large chunk of the florette, very close to the lens, which is definitely gonna remain out of focus. And that's gonna provide a kind of depth to it as well on the right hand side. What's that like? Heck, that's not bad. I mean, yeah. As, as a study of the vegetable, I can't moan at it. Let me just tilt the camera slightly. Yeah. There, so we're just looking down uh, the tree, branch, no, branch, no, 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 the trunk. We're looking down the trunk of the floret uh, at, uh, at part of the, uh, the kind of brack flower at the top of it and see what happens there. Put that to one side as well and see what else we can find in the kitchen. Well, I've just spied this with um, peppercorns in it. I wonder what I can do with peppercorns. I'm going to put these onto the lid of something. I, th I think this is probably a, a cream or a creme fraiche container lid or something like that at one point. It just helps keep them together and it allows me to stack them up. It's uh, just got a nice little recess to it. Always keep these things if, uh, if you're going to do any uh, photography like this because they're really, really useful. So change the angle of the camera. There you see, I'm very, very close to it. Now these things are very, very interesting. This little pinnacle one here is rather nice. And try and keep that part in view. Oops, didn't work well, did it? There we go, let's try, try there. In actual fact, I think I can really kind of work with that one. I do like that one, it's nice. Pull that into focus. I'm not sure I want it right in the center. Perhaps I want it more over to one side and so yeah i think we need to shield this side you can see as i put my hand in here how the light varies on that oh that's much nicer it's creating a really nice negative bit of darkness there i wonder whether we can do anything more with that the clothing catalog oh and now that's really bringing the color out of, uh, of it i really like that i'm going to go for that and i think i need something else even more Now, I've got to say that these little things are absolutely fascinating. Of course, with the naked eye, you just don't see how 
absolutely beautiful they are. But just a whole black peppercorn and you get an image like this. Now I've got to say, I think I need a, a little bit more uh, shielding even now. Um, I need to find something to put in there. And this is just to stop the lighting coming in. So just to... You really want to turn your idle time or your, your sleep time on your, your cameras uh, to much longer than what you might normally have because in your prep of these things, it goes off and then often you've got to reach around into a place you can't easily see and such to get it back and it's a nuisance. So be aware of that. There are some really gorgeous orangey brown tones to this and I really like it. One of the things that's really interesting about the color brown is that you can't get brown light because brown is one of those colors that's more suggested within its environment than anything else. If you think about it, brown is a, is, is a yellow or it's an orange and you can't actually manufacture brown light. You perceive it, but you can't get brown light. Have a think about that. Anyway, this is a nice shot. I do like this. Uh, and uh, I, I'm not sure how many more I'm going to get uh, of these because, well, at the end of the day, what am I going to do with them? I could, I suppose, offer them to a photo library, a uh, yeah, digital stock library, which might be the reason to continue shooting them. But for the purposes of this video, I think I'm going to move on to something else. But these these are just wonderful. <laughs> they are very, very nice. And uh, I wonder if I've got anything else that's kind of just as small that uh, has got yeah, the same kind of detail in it. And of course salt, but salt is very, very small. So I'm not going to do that. Even with the one and a half magnification I've got the lens here, I don't think I'll get anything terribly interesting with salt. So I'm going to avoid that for the moment. Um, and uh, maybe run with a, a tomato or something. I don't know. I'm not going in anything like as tight. I'm looking at it more as an ingredient board rather than a, uh, a, a macro shot. So I'm much, much, much further away. I suppose I'm nine, 10 inches or so from the subject. And it's still giving me detail, but it's not anything like as detailed as before. There, I'll put the board at a slight angle, pull the onion in. Nice little shadow under the onion, kind of like that. Although I think I want to go further in, so I'm going to just get a little bit more detail here. Down any further, will that kind of go there? It doesn't feel right, that. Let's, in order to achieve what I want here, I need to pull these things further onto the board. That hasn't really worked for me. Now, hey, what if I were to tilt? No, tilting the board doesn't work well. What I'm trying to do is to avoid getting the black background in here. Running an F4 shot, focusing probably just about there. I know my finger. Oh, what, how are we doing with the, uh, the lighting? I think the lighting's too harsh, actually. We'll put it up to F8. We'll try that again. Now, I think I need to just block a bit of light. That's too small. Let's get... <coughs> this mailing this bit of junk mail. Maybe just there. We'll try that again. Because we're just picking up a little bit too much light on the cut sections of the onion. Anyway, I hope that's given you some ideas for the kind of things that you might just get up to maybe in your kitchen or a living room like this with your camera, uh, a light box and uh, a bit of time to play around. One thing's for sure, 
tonight's meal is going to be broccoli, cauliflower, onion and tomatoes. Don't know what else yet. If you've liked this content, click the like button. Cheers. Tune in again for one of my other videos or select one of these here. Take care.